Good morning and Happy New Year. And I can't believe it's already 2023. One of the things that I love about the new year is that no matter what your past year has been like, whether it's been good, bad, chaotic, and everything in between, we get to just pause and reset our lives again to the invitation of Jesus in this new year. This will be an interactive service. And so take some moment, grab an apple and honey. And if you don't have that, that's totally fine. Grab something sweet. And we would love for you to engage with us in our worship service. So now let's take a moment, let's pause and let's worship our Jesus together. Give you glory for all you've brought me through, and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you, and now I'm Says 
Turning graves, you turn graves into gardens. 
Can you believe it? 2023. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I thought by 2023 we'd all have flying robot cars. <laughs> That's what 
But uh, here we are, and it's just uh, a new year, which is a chance to reflect and, and think about the past year and what's going ahead. And we're just we're so glad to be with you. So happy new year. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us for this online service. And we thought it'd be special and meaningful for us to gather, even though we're not in person right now, to gather at least online to recenter and reorient ourselves as we begin the new year. And um, it's not just us. People have been doing this for generations. And so when you go back to the first century world, world of Jesus, Jesus being a good Jewish man, would have grown up uh, as a boy and a young man and into adulthood celebrating a Jewish tradition called Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah, uh, in the Hebrew, it's, it's a phrase that means the head of the year or the first of the year. And Orthodox Jews still to this day celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. And typically it takes place in the fall around September right. or October. But of course for us, you and I, this is our new year. And so we thought we would take some of the beautiful traditions that Jesus would have practiced and um, practice them together here. And it really, again, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year or the first of the year, the new year is a celebration and a marker and an opportunity for us to reorient and um, recenter ourselves on God and um, seek his guidance and direction for our lives. And Rosh Hashanah, which was actually uh, sometimes called the, the, the Festival of Trumpets. And the reason it was called the Festival of Trumpets is because the whole thing was started by the blowing of a shofar. Now, if you're like me, you think of a shofar, you might think Return of the Jedi and how the Ewoks <laughs> blew it and that was the Battle of Endor. But the shofar actually has a deep, rich theological significance. Um, the very first time the shofar was blown in the history of the Jewish people was at the base of Mount Sinai. They had just been delivered from slavery, from the evil Pharaoh by God himself, led through the Red Sea on dry land. And as they're at Mount Sinai, God's about to show up with this beautiful covenant ceremony to say, I'll be your God and you'll be my people. And they blow the shofar to gather the people. But it goes even deeper than that because the very first time the word shofar appears in the Bible is in the beautiful and terrible story of the binding, the Akeda mm -hmm. of Isaac. Uh, Abraham is about to sacrifice Isaac, his beloved son, and God, the, the angel stops him and says, stop, stop, stop. And then he says, don't sacrifice your son. And there he looks up and there is a ram caught in the thicket by his shofar, his horn. And so the word shofar is a symbol. It's a metaphor for God's faithful provision and substitution through the ages. And so um, in Leviticus, as, the, the, as God is instituting the Feast of Trumpets, God says to Moses this in Leviticus 23, 23, the Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. And the trumpet was actually the blowing of the shofar. Yeah. And the shofar, the blowing of the shofar during Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, it would remind the people when they would hear the trumpet blast that the time of repentance had come. And I think often we think of repentance mm -hmm. as regret. Oh man, I did so much wrong this past year. Um, I'm such a failure. I mean, I, I'm often tempted to feel that way about my own life. But we've talked about this at Westgate before. Repentance is not really about regret. Repentance is about turning. Mm. Literally, the word means to turn from one direction to another. So really, repentance is not necessarily just feeling bad about what we've done and um, living with regret and beating ourselves up over past mistakes. Actually, repentance is far more hopeful than that. It's the reminder that when we confess mm. our brokenness, our wrongdoing, when we confess our sin to God, he does not lord it over us any longer. He leaves it in the past and he leads us down the path of healing and wholeness and freedom. And so during Rosh Hashanah, the New Year festival, when they would hear the shofar blown, they would be reminded, hey, the past is the past. And as, as 
long as you confess and repent of your wrongdoing, there is a bright and bold future ahead for you. And so to commemorate that as a part of the festival, the people of God would then gather together. They would take a stone, a rock like this, and they would find a body of water, typically a river or a stream, and they would go to that river or stream and they would cast the stone into the body of water. And they did this as a physical reminder of um, passages like Micah chapter 7, verse 18 to 20, where it says, Who is a God like you? who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. Those are God's people. You do not stay angry forever, Mm. but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot. And here's the line. You will hurl all our iniquities, all of our sins, all of our mistakes into the depths of the sea. And so for us, as we leave the the past year behind and move into the new year ahead, um, this is a reminder for us that all of the past mistakes, all of the failures, all of the brokenness, all of the pain, as long as we confess it to God, bring it to God, Mm. he has compassion on us and he hurls our brokenness, our sins, our wrongdoing, our mistakes to the depths of the sea. What a beautiful reminder of God's faithfulness and his provision for us. But then after that, after you hear that incredible news and are reminded of God's good graciousness and his faithfulness to us, the people would eat a celebratory meal. And one of the things they would often have is they would have apples and they would have honey. Now honey is the sweetest naturally occurring substance on the planet. Is that true, Dave? It is. Wow. I looked it up, I Googled that. This is before Snickers bars. Um, (laughs) And so- Also not natural Snickers bars. (laughs) You could make a make a case that they're not, yeah. So what they would do is the people would eat um, and they would dip apples into honey as a reminder. And it reminds me, even when children would go to school for the first time, there was a rabbinic tradition as, as little kids, like kindergartners, yeah. entered into the school, the rabbis would give the children honey and they would read this verse from Psalm 119, which is, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. The Jewish people would be reminded that God's word that God's presence with them is the sweetest thing in the world, and they would eat it. So that's what we do. They would also, uh, there's also Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. This is just a reminder, a celebration, uh, kind of a visual reminder and a, and a tactile reminder yeah. through through the senses that God is sweet. And so they dip the apple into honey. Jay, you want to do this too? Come on, it'll be yeah. fun. And we said at the beginning of this service online, you know, for you to grab some apple slices and some honey, or if you don't have that, or something sweet, something sweet, like probably a box Snick- of, Snickers bar, or maybe a box something. of nerds. I don't know. <laughs> so we would invite you to do this with us as well. Yeah, let's taste and see that the Lord. Do, or, do you want to toast? Do we do? Cheers. Cheers to God. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Mm. Are these Fuji apples? They are. I, I requested. Fuji. <laughs> They're not really good. Oh, man. Mm. Really good. The Jewish people would say this, um, a prayer, a prayer of sorts. Be it thy will that a good and sweet ear be renewed for us. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the tree. Yeah, I love that line, that God is the creator of the fruit of the tree. Uh, For those of us who are somewhat familiar with the biblical story, it reminds us, of course, of the opening lines of the Bible in Genesis, when a good God creates a good world. And he tells man and woman, he says, man, this is all for you. It's for my glory, God's glory, and it is for your good. And I believe that that story continues on for us today, that God has good in store for us. God has good in store for you. He has fruit to offer you in this year to come. And that good may not look the way you planned. Often it doesn't. But if we believe that God is God and we are not, then what we also believe is that he knows what's good in ways that we can't possibly understand. So as we again, recenter and reorient ourselves as we head into 2023, our hope and prayer is that we might trust in the goodness of God and that he might in turn bless us with a sweet new year. You know, it's amazing. There's this, uh, there's this prayer that we have that, that this would be the best year mm. that you've ever had with God. 
that this would be the best year you've ever had with God, that you would never look back on the good old days with God, mm. but this year would yeah. be your best year with God, that you'd be closer with him, that you'd walk with him tighter, that you'd experience his goodness and provision and joy that comes with walking with God more than you ever have. So happy new year as we recenter ourselves on God himself. that is our prayer, that we would receive more of God's blessings in our lives as we head out into the new year. For us here at Westgate Church, there are many next steps to help you find your next step in your journey of growing in your relationship with Jesus. Whether you are new to our community or exploring your faith 
or you're disconnected and you want to find your community here at Westgate Church, there is a next step for you. You can find out more through westgatechurch.org slash next steps. Or for the next two weeks, we will have our next steps tables out in all of our campuses. And our team would love to help you find your best next step. One thing to just remind ourselves is that as you go on our page, there are a lot of next steps. But the invitation from Jesus is to discern with him and to find out what might be your best next step to grow in your journey with Jesus. And we hope and our prayer is that you find that as you enter into 2023. And here's Jay for the closing benediction. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our New Year's Day service. And one quick note, I know that some of us um, are, we miss each other and we're, we're looking to be together. So we do have an in-person gathering tonight, 4 p.m. at the Saratoga campus called New Year's Together. It's a family service, so you can bring the kiddos. There'll be a shorter service, about an hour or so, and we'll sing together. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, how change actually works and maybe happens in our lives. I know in the new year, we're all thinking about um, how we might change things for the better this year. So uh, if you are wanting to gather in person, we would love to see you tonight, 4 p.m. at the Saratoga campus, um, and we'll, we'll be able to worship together. And so finally, as we go from here, not just into the week that is to come, but the year that is to come, may we go in the great confidence of knowing that we have a good God who loves us, and he has a good year in store for us, a sweet new year. And what, we, what we're called to do is live with longing and expectation and openness um, to what God by his spirit might want to do. So that's my prayer and hope for you. Grace, peace, and love to you. And uh, we will see you all very soon.